Ladies and gentlemen, we can be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, good morning. Good morning. How do you feel this morning? Good. How are your accommodations? Good. If you're having a hotel that's um, that's serviceable at least, yes. are you comfortable? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Are you getting fed well? Yes. Have you gained those seven pounds that I told yes. you about yet? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and are the deputies treating you well? Yes. Thank you. Thank you again for your patience. Um, when we stopped yesterday, the state had indicated to have one of the witnesses call. Uh, this witness works in an undercover capacity still with the Memphis Police Department, so he'll state his name, will spell his name for the record, and the uh, court reporter and the news media have been informed that they cannot film him from his chest up because of security issue, um, because of the kind of work that he does. Um, and once he's referred to by name, and it spells his name. Nobody else was used his name in court because we want to make sure that he stays safe in what he does in his undercover capacity. Uh, State of Tennessee, you may call your next witness. Ms. Schofield, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Detective, what do you work? Multi agency gang unit, Memphis Police Department. And uh, were you working in that capacity back in 2017? Yes. And were you working for a then Sergeant BC? Yes. Uh, back then, was your unit uh, engaged uh, or part of Operation Rebound? Yes. And uh, as a part of that operation, uh, back on November 12, 2017, what were you doing? I was conducting surveillance on the okay. case. And who were you surveilling? Uh, Sheriff Wright and Billy Turner. Now, uh, was this part of a, a larger operation where your team was trying to see what they were doing? Yes. Uh, had Cheryl Wright come into town unexpectedly? Yes. And was your team aware of this due to a wiretap on both her phone and on Billy Turner's phone? Yes. And so at some point, did your team become aware that they may be trying to meet up? Yes. And well, what did you do in response to that? Uh, we met, we listened, well, we were directed to go to a specific location and uh, we met them there. Okay, do you remember what that location was? Uh, 483 Starlight. Okay. Is that here in Shelby County, Tennessee? Yes. And did you, in fact, go to that location? Yes. And you talk about surveillance team. What does that entail? Uh, we follow, we're told to follow a specific person, and we just pretty much tell them around, keep an eye on them, see what they're doing. Now, are you in a police car and wearing a police uniform more when you're doing this? No, we're in unmarked vehicles. Unmarked vehicles. Are you wearing plain clothes? Yes. Trying to be unobtrusive yes sir okay and so did you in fact go over to this uh, starlight address to see what was going on yes and uh, tell us what happened once you got there what did you see? I uh, saw a white Jetta uh, pull on the street and park in front of 482 starlight and I saw Michelle Wright get out the vehicle <coughs> okay. and go to 483 starlight and were you expecting her to arrive at that location yes do you see any did she went inside you said yes okay. did anybody else arrive Yes, uh, Billy Turner. He arrived in a maroon Chevy Silverado pickup truck. Okay. Do you see him here in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out for me, please? Describe what he's wearing. Uh, red tie, uh, gray suit, black suit. We'll let the record reflect he's identified the defendant, Your Honor. Record will reflect um, that the witness has pointed to has described and has identified the defendant as Mr. Billy Turner. You may proceed, Mr. Schofield. And once he arrived on the scene, what did you see? I saw him get out of his vehicle and go into 483 Starlight, the same location where Ms. Wright was. All right. And uh, did they stay in there long? Uh, not really. Okay. Did they come out? Yes, they came out. Together? Yes. And what did you see then? Uh, I observed them walking up and down the street, talking. Was anybody else with them? No, it was just them two. And how long were they doing that? About 30, 30 to 35 minutes. 30 to 35 minutes walking up and down the street talking? Yes. Did you hear what they were saying? No, I could not. Um, did this raise your suspicion? Yes. 
was this a back the type of thing the whole wiretap operation was trying to induce? Yes. While you were out there, uh, were you in your car or were you outside of your car? I was in my vehicle. Okay. Uh, did you take any pictures? Yes, I did. All right. I'm going to pass forward some items uh, and just ask you to look through them and describe them one by one uh, for the judge. Your Honor, I've already shown these to defense counsel. I don't believe there's any objections. Yes, sir. And detective, if you could, uh, with the first one, just uh, describe to the court what that's a picture of. Uh, Sheva Wright uh, walking to her uh, gym, okay. gym that she arrived in. And the next one? Billy Turner uh, exiting his Chevy Silverado. All right. And the next one? Uh, Billy and Cheryl walking down the street talking. Okay. And the next one? Still talking, walking down the street. And the next one? Still talking, walking in the op opposite direction, walking down the street. And the next one? Uh, this is them leaving the house in the middle of the street talking. All right, and the next one? Still in the middle of the street talking after they left the residence. All right, and the next one? Mr. Turner, is he walked Sheriff to her vehicle. All right. And he's standing in the doorway while she's in, sitting in the vehicle, driver's seat. All right, is that the last picture? Yes. Your Honor, we have those moved in as a state next number exhibits one. Record, uh, Mr. Perry, Mr. Thomas, any objections? No objections. Exhibit number 96-96. Photograph described by this detective as a photograph of Cheryl Wright. Leaving her Jetta. Exhibit number 96. Exhibit number 97. Photograph described by this witness as Billy Turner exiting a Chevy Silverado, exhibit number 97. Exhibit number 98. Photograph described by this witness as photograph of Billy Turner and Shell were right walking and talking, exhibit 98. Exhibit number 99. Photographs described it as witnesses. Picture of Cheryl Wright and Billy Turner still walking and talking. 99. Exhibit 100, 100. Photograph described by this witness as photograph showing Cheryl Wright and Billy Turner walking and talking in the opposite direction. Exhibit number 100. Exhibit number 101. Photograph described by this witness as photograph showing Billy Turner and Cheryl Wright in the middle of the street talking. Exhibit 101. Exhibit number 102 is a photograph described by this witness as a photograph showing Cheryl Wright and Billy Turner after they had left the residence. Exhibit 102. Lastly, exhibit number 103, 103. A photograph described by this witness as a photograph of Billy Turner walking Shara right to her car, exhibit 103. Schofield, you may proceed. Thank you, I'm going to to the attorney. Yes, sir.
All right, Detective Pittman, you're not going to be in on this joke because you haven't been here all week, but I'm going to once again try the laser pointer. Oh, look at that. Now, who is this individual right here? <laughs> I was expecting applause, but okay. Uh, who is this individual right here, Detective? The data sheriff, right? Billy Turner. And what is this picture of? Uh, Billy Turner and Sherry Wright walking down the street. Uh, that's Billy walking Sherry to her uh, jetter. And this one? That's also Billy watching, walking her to the jetter that she arrived in. And this one? That's Billy Turner standing in the doorway of the vehicle and Sherry was sitting in the driver's seat. These are a little bit out of order, but more pictures of them walking down the street. Yes. More pictures of them walking down the street. Yes. Now, Detective, you uh, earlier said that uh, you thought this was between 30 and 35 minutes they were out there walking up and down the street talking. At the report about this at 34 minutes, would that be correct? Yes. I'll pass the question. Ms. Thomas and or Mr. John Keith Perry, Ms. Thomas, you may proceed. Yeah. Detective, um, this was November. Uh, what day was this again? November the 12th, 2017. Detective, through your uh, investigation on that day, were you able to determine if, uh, if there were other people at this home at 40, 48, 483 Starlight? Yes, I was. Were you able to determine what was going on at that home? No, I was not. If I was to tell you that there was a cookout going on there, would you be able to confirm or deny that? Possibly, I couldn't confirm or deny that. So there were other people at the home? Yes, it was. This talk between Char, Cher, and Billy, was, it wasn't a secret, was it? It was kind of odd because they left a residence to walk down the street and talk privately. They were walking down the street in public for anybody to see? Yes. No, of course. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Mr. Sophia. They were walking down the street for anybody to see, but they weren't in the house for anybody to hear. Yes. Right. True. That's it, Your Honor. Ms. Thomas, any additional questions? One other. You didn't hear that conversation either, did you? No, I did not. Schofield, any additional questions? Thank you, Your Honor. I want to thank you. You've been president of court today. I'm going to excuse you for an additional testimony on this case. You cannot discuss your testimony with anyone or allow anyone to talk to you about their testimony. And make sure you stay safe, sir. Yes, sir. I'm thank you. Down I have a good evening, sir. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hagger, Ms. Schofield, the State of Tennessee, have an additional proof. As we indicated yesterday, that's our last witness and we'll rest our case in chief. Thank you, Ms. Hagger, Ms. Schofield. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the last witness the state of Tennessee has in this case against Mr. Billy Turner. Um, you kill, still rather, cannot discuss the case amongst yourselves, cannot discuss the case with anyone else. We'll take a brief recess, and he talked to um, Mr. John Keith Perry and Mr. Um, Andre Thomas to see whether or not they choose to present any additional proof on behalf of Mr. Turner. Remember what the court has told you, they do not have to present any additional proof at all, and if they do, uh, you hear from any witnesses that Mr. Perry and Mr. Thomas chooses to call for Mr. Turner. 
If there are no other witnesses, you have heard all the proof that you will hear in this case. But please do not discuss the case at this point. It would not be appropriate to do so. I need to have those legal discussions out of your presence, and we'll call you back in the courtroom shortly. You can follow Deputy Smith, please. Is out. Um, do we have an emotion who's um, yeah. uh, Keith Perry and Ms. Andre Thomas that you want to present on behalf of Mr. Billy Turner at the State of Tennessee has rested his case in chief? Your Honor, at this time we'd like to make a formal JNOV or alternate in the alternative uh, judgment of acquittal, motion for judgment of acquittal uh, based on the insufficiency of the evidence in this case, uh, specifically with the state's uh, main witness given, uh, I think, extremely contradictory testimony throughout his testimony. We are of the opinion that the uh, that the, the state has failed to meet the burden to get this case before the jury. And Dorm Ms. Hagerman and Ms. Schofield. Any Your Honor, uh, at this point it takes the uh, evidence like most favorable to the state. Your Honor has heard from Jimmy Martin who has laid out a conspiracy to kill Lorenzo Wright and included Billy Turner. Uh, Your Honor has heard Mr. Martin testify about statements that both, both Ms. Wright and Mr. Turner may claim responsibility for the homicide. Your Honor has seen uh, a large amount of circumstantial proof uh, incriminating uh, this defendant. Your Honor has heard firsthand about the trip uh, that Jimmy Martin and this defendant took to Atlanta. Your Honor has heard this defendant uh, make statements that are uh, caught in lies and made statements that tend to incriminate him with regard to details that corroborate Mr. Martin. We have jury questions for this jury, and I think all three uh, charges should go to the jury. And for the record, this is a motion for judgment, a court of motion for directed verdict that says just call fee. Do not believe the state of Tennessee has carried its burden uh, to even submit this case to the jury because of the extremely contradictory testimony of uh, Jimmy Martin and also the lack of evidence that would be allowed to submit this case to the jury. When the sufficiency of the evidence is challenged, the relevant question that this court has to make is whether reviewing, after reviewing evidence in the light most favorable to the state of Tennessee, whether any rational trier of fact could have found the essential elements of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, federal case, um, Jackson, Jackson versus Virginia, 443 U.S. page 307, 1979, United States Supreme Court opinion, and State versus Davis, D-A-V-I-S, 354 Southwest 3rd, page 718, 2011 Tennessee Supreme Court opinion. These are factual issues, as, as uh, Mr. Perry has indicated, and these are credibility issues, as Mr. Perry has indicated. In the trial court, uh, the credibility of the witnesses the weight, be, the weight to be given to their testimony and reconciliation of any conflicts, as Perry has indicated, that he believes that Jimmy Martin's con testimony has been extremely contradictory. Those credibility issues, the weight to be given to the testimony of the witnesses and the reconciliation of any conflicts in the testimony are matters that the trier of fact determines. This court does not determine factual issues, as I told the jury uh, on Monday. Uh, the jury determines uh, what is factually true, determines whether or not those conflicts can be resolved. And part of the uh, court's charge is that if the jury finds that there is, in fact, contradictory testimony, the jury must reconcile those conflicts if they can without hastily or rashly concluding that a witness has sworn falsely because the law presumes that every witness who has testified has, in fact, told the truth. At State versus Campbell, C A M P B E L L, 245 Southwest 3rd, page 331, a 2008 Tennessee Supreme Court opinion, the trial court does not weigh the evidence. If there is a conviction in the case as a 13 juror, the court would have to affirm that verdict, any verdict that the jury reached if there is, in fact, any conviction. But this threshold question, uh, whether or not there is uh, any rational trial fact could find essential elements of this offense beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, there are three essential elements in first degree murder. Um, based on the proof that is before the court, Mr. Martin may or may not be charged as an accomplice. Mr. Martin's testimony said he had absolutely nothing to do with the first degree murder. And if the court does not charge him as an accomplice on that first degree murder, based on his testimony alone, if the jury believes that testimony, the jury 
uh, can, in fact, find essential elements of first-degree murder based simply solely on the testimony of Jimmy Martin. There's also other testimony on the record, Ms. Robinson, uh, who testifies as a cousin. Um, this court um, legally, factually cannot find that she's an accomplice on any of his conduct. Testified she was present in two, with, two meetings rather than which Jimmy Martin, Billy Turner, Cheryl Wright, both talked about plans to kill Lorenzo Wright. Uh, Shara Wright wanted him killed because she was under the impression that um, Lorenzo Wright had a hit on her and she wanted to have him killed before he killed her, allegedly. At least two different meetings that talked about how they were going to do it, procuring guns and multiple text messages and Facebook messages and other social media messages in which there was code words used as to how this plan was going to be carried out on the conspiracy. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Martin is certainly an accomplice to the, uh, to the conspiracy. Uh, testified that he went there, had a plan to kill Lorenzo Wright, got there, saw a bald-headed person on the couch that he got within arm's length of and decided that that was the wrong person, decided not to kill that person. That testimony has actually been corroborated by Mr. Lorenzo Wright, um, who called himself Mr. Wright's uh, best friend had known him since grade school and was in fact did sleep on the couch in that condo for the three months that he lived there, slept on the couch, was very comfortable. Physical description for the record totally fits the description that um, Demi Martin gave when he talked about the person who was present on that couch and they did not carry out that planned killing earlier in 2010. Um, Mr. Martin is obviously a, a, a accomplice uh, to an attempted murder. Uh, his testimony has been sufficiently corroborated by all the other proof on the case, not only the text messages, but also surveillance that um, was developed over the course of these years, years rather the physical property that was recovered that corroborated uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Jimmy Martin's testimony. In order for a jury to find Mr. Billy Turner guilty of conspiracy, cannot be found guilty of conspiracy based only on the testimony of Jimmy Martin because he is in fact an accomplice to that crime. It has to be corroborated by some other facts including other factors that go to the identity of Billy Turner. There is more than enough corroborated evidence for a jury to find the essential elements of conspiracy to commit a first degree murder. Criminal attempt to commit a felony to with first degree murder again, um, Mr. Jimmy Martin necessarily would, in fact, be a accomplice as a matter of law and a matter of fact on that case. Um, there is, again, more than enough evidence that would corroborate what his testimony is, um, the physical proof, the crime scene location, uh, the things that were recovered uh, at the crime scene, um, the shells that were recovered, the medical examiner's testimony as to what bullets were found in the decomposing skeletalizing body of Lorenzen Wright some eight or nine days after the shooting, and ultimately the car that belongs to Billy Turner, um, the red wire cutters um, that um, Mr. Jimmy Martin indicated were in fact used to cut this wire. All of that testimony has been sufficiently cor corroborated, rather, and these are strictly factual credibility issues that a trial fact that a jury has been obligated, has been charged with resolving. And based on all of that, and for the reasons to say that the court will, in fact, deny the motion for judgment or acquittal, these are 100% jury questions that this jury will, in fact, resolve if they can as to whether or not the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty that Mr. Martin is guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and whether or not he's guilty of criminal attempt to commit first degree murder. I will deny the motion for judgment of acquittal for all of those reasons. Uh, Mr. Uh, Perry, Mr. Thomas, I'm going to take a recess for a minute and give you a chance to talk to Mr. Billy Turner uh, to see whether or not um, he's made a decision as to whether or not he will, one, present any additional testimony, and secondly, whether or not he's chosen to testify. And before we start, we'll conduct that moment hearing, or resume rather, we conduct the moment hearing as to whether he chooses to testify as a witness or not. you will also talk to Mr. Uh, Turner about uh, the conference that we had at the bench uh, on the lesser included charges based on statutes of limitations. The court's opinion is on class A felonies and greater, first degree murder, class A felonies, the statute of limitations is 15 years. On a class B felony, statute of limitations is eight years. On a C or D felony, statute of limitations is six years. 
And on an E felony and misdemeanors, it will be less than that. Uh, two years on a D, on an E felony, 11 months and 29 days on <clears throat> a misdemeanor. This conduct allegedly occurred in 2010. The prosecution commenced when the indictment was returned by the grand jury in 2017 for a C or D felony, four years, two years for an E felony, 11 months and 29 days for misdemeanor. For the court to charge any lesser included offenses other, any offenses other than a class A felony or B felony, this term would have to waive uh, his statute of limitations, waiving the claims as to uh, the prosecution of conviction on those uh, D felonies or C felonies or less. Uh, he would have to waive the statute of limitations, otherwise the court cannot charge that. So if he wants the court to charge something other than a B felony or an A felony, he would have to waive that and also need to talk to Mr. Turner once you had a chance to discuss it with him to see whether or not he wants to waive the statute of limitations or submit it to the jury on only A and B felonies. Anything else before we take a recess so that um, Mr. John Keith Perry and Mr. Um, Andre Thomas can talk to Mr. Turner? No, not from us, yeah. We call the court into recess. Uh, we can ask the courtroom to be cleared and we'll resume shortly, please.